Now where is it? I don't know it's, oh yep, yeah, there it is. Oh, hey, sorry, I, uh, I wasn't expecting any company. I'll, um, I'll hop down and I'll show you what this exciting episode from Range Woodworking's about. Bear with me. There it is. It's a toddler's two-in-one step stool. As you can see, it stands upright and they can join you at the kitchen island or whatever because they want to be involved in everything. And if I take these clips down, it falls into a table just like that. They can have a seat, draw, do whatever kids do. Yeah, stick around. I'll, uh, I'll show you how I made it. Oh. <laughs> Okay, truth be told, I'm using plans for this build. And frankly, if you're watching this video, you've probably seen Jonathan Katz Moses collaboration with Bourbon Moth on either of their channels, and it's their plans I'll be using. And these plans are great. They have the dimensions of all the pieces, and as you can see here, even an optimized plan for your cuts. I'll link the plans and their videos in the description below. The plans come in Imperial and uh, there isn't a metric option, so my first step is to spend a bit of time with the calculator to convert them. Fortunately, there's nothing particularly rigid about any of the measurements, as long as you're consistent. And unfortunately, my customer chose an MDF option for this one, so it's going to be a very dusty build. In fact, think of dust as the theme of this build. On that note, you'll probably notice I'll be wearing a mask pretty much the whole time in this video because safety first, folks. But regardless of the construction medium, I can't recommend a track saw enough. In a small workshop like mine, a track saw makes for safe and easy breaking down of sheet goods like MDF and plywood. And once all the pieces are cut, we'll see the first appearance of the templates I bought with the plans. You don't have to get these when you get the plans, but I found they made life a lot easier for only $10 more. I simply place the template on the piece and draw around it with a sharpie. I prefer the thick line of the sharpie because it provides a lot more wiggle room for you to work towards. Once outlined, I clamp the piece down and cut as close as I can to that line with a jigsaw. For the internal cuts, I attempt to drill some holes using a Forstner bit. Seven hours later. And obviously that's not working, so we'll change some things up. That's more like it. And the jigsaw is back again. I don't use the jigsaw very often, and truth be told, I'm not really sure why, as it's great for this sort of thing even if it makes a fair bit of mess. But then, with MDF, everything is messy. So the most basic option using an entry-level tool is using rasps to get as close to the finished edge of your line and then hand sand down to the last little bit. But that's not what I'm gonna do. The next option would be to use a benchtop sander, much quicker, could be a bit messier, and doesn't really solve the issue of the inside corners. So that's not what I'm going to do. The final couple of options have something in common. They both require the reintroduction of the template, some green painter's tape, and some super glue. With some super glue applied to one side of the sandwich, we'll pop the two pieces together and temporarily fix them. Now once the template is temporarily fixed to the MDF, I'll first utilise these pre-made drill holes. You can mark through these with an appropriate size drill bit, but this is a bit tedious so I'll be using a spring-loaded punch. Oh goodness, where am I getting that from? I can hear you rummaging around in there. Okay, um, on to method part three. A couple of bits of scrap with a dramatic cloud of dust elevate the template and material off the workbench.
And once we get all that clamped together, now is the moment I realise that I've set it up upside down. Much better. I'll be using a spiral compression flush trim bit in the router. Not that the camera will focus on it apparently. As you can see, this does a great job of following the template underneath the MDF. Just work on through it slow and steady. Unfortunately, as you can still see, it's pretty messy. This router does have a dust collection attachment, but I find it really limits your visibility. The fourth option is similar, but uses this monster half inch spiral compression flush trim bit. Using my plunge router in my router table addition to my workbench, the flush trim bit will do pretty much the same job as the smaller router, but at least I can utilize a small amount of unobtrusive dust collection. However, there's definitely room for improvement. Whilst I burn through the rest of the template routing in hyperspeed, I'll quickly ask you to consider liking the video and subscribing below. It goes such a long way in terms of promoting this channel through YouTube's algorithm, and it also encourages me to keep on filming, editing, and uploading these videos that you may or may not enjoy. Okay, groveling over. Using a brad point bit, I drill through those marks I punished before all the routing. As you can see, I mark the indents with a sharpie to make my life easier. Now I'm going to have a quick dry fit with some assistance from clamps. Following the plans, I make sure that each piece is set out appropriately. And the seat here has to sit flush with the edge, so I'll quickly clamp a bit of scrap to rest it on whilst I clamp it in place. This will have to do until I get more hands or an assistant or something. Whilst everything's clamped together, I take this opportunity to drill my pilot holes for the screws that will hold everything together. And obviously, being a super duper primo professional woodworker, all of these pilot holes are countersunk. On that note, there are a fair few screws in this thing. Now it's been far too long since I've made an unpleasant mess, so I throw a 6.4mm or quarter inch roundover on the appropriate edges before retreating away to escape the dust. The next day, after a very long shower to get the dust out of everywhere and everything, you can see the two parts of this stool are really starting to take shape. And then once I pop it in the upright position, I'll allow myself a quick satisfied grimace and start working on the hinge between the two pieces. I'll use this piano hinge for the two and set about laying it out to make sure it's equally spaced so it folds symmetrically. Once again in position I whip out my smuggled scent punch and mark, drill a hole and start fixing the hinge in place. I can then measure how far this hinge is from that edge I match it at the other end to make sure that it's square. Once one side is all done, I make sure the two halves are aligned, punch, drill and fix the hinges in place. Et voila! We have the makings of a folding two-in-one step stool come table thing. And everything's been going pretty well to this point, so it's time to face the grim reality nearing the end of any project. Sanding. And worse than that, hand sanding. MDF. You'll have to imagine your own version of purgatory here, so we'll just skip ahead. In fact, we'll skip all the boring stuff. After sanding, I use a good primer sealer combo and then spray two coats of a hard wearing white enamel paint using those screw holes to elevate the piece so I can do both faces at once. Next morning. And then as per SpongeBob, the next morning I can fix it all together again and have a quick practice run of the folding thing. 
And that works really well. As you can see, the hinge creates a bit of a gap between the halves and the table position. So I just use my little silicon chopping board feet to support the gap. Or at least that's what I'm trying to show you here without much joy. Anywho, I fix the feet in place and they do a great job of supporting the table position. Hey, presto. Now, given that small children will be standing on top of this and leaning forwards and stuff, it makes sense to put some small latches on it so that it only folds or unfolds when you want it to. These clips were kind enough to include some adhesive foam backing, which makes installing really easy. If they didn't have this, I'd probably just use some super glue and accelerator to hold them in place whilst I organize something a little more permanent. Speaking of more permanent, I'll use this Vix bit to drill my pilot holes before driving some simple round head screws in. And for the sake of consistency and to keep everything looking tidy, I might as well have some catches to hold it in the table position as well. Okie dokie, the final little touch on this comes in the form of a chalkboard on the back. I just tape off the area for the chalkboard. I probably should have measured and put some guidelines on, but I just eyeballed it. Then applying with a short nap roller, I promptly go beyond the tape lines and curse myself before quickly finishing up, um, so I can't make any more mistakes. And there you have it, a two-in-one toddler's step stool complete with chalkboard. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time, take it easy.